Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Hello and welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. I've got an amazing guest, very informative and a repeat guest, uh, Mr. Jordan Goodman from MoneyAnswers.com. You're going to want to go there. Not right now. Watch this video first and then go directly there. I'll put a link in the description below this video. Uh, but we're going to talk about the markets. What's going on today? Uh, this is the Teflon market, as I like to call it. Uh, just keeps on marching upwards, but is that justified? Is it reasonable? And how can you make money in this type of market? It's it's not so easy at the tail end, possibly, of a bull market. So, uh, Mr. Jordan Goodman, welcome back to Looking at the Markets, sir. Great to be with you again, David. Appreciate it. Yeah. And so, uh, as I mentioned, we are still hovering near all-time highs in the major stock market indexes. Uh, we're in a global economic cycle. But uh, something tells me that maybe all is not well in the kingdom <laughs> as far as the economy goes. Uh, what do you say about that? Well, you're right. To some extent, it's a squeeze of money from around the world into the U.S. where things look much better. Uh, Europe is in very weak position. I mean, to have the amount of negative interest rates that they have, something like $17 trillion worth of negative interest rates, tells you just how incredibly weak things are there. And then we don't know exactly when or how, but there's going to be a Brexit at some point as well, which is going to make them even weaker. Both Europe and Britain are going to be hurt by Brexit. So Europe's in pretty weak shape. Uh, Asia's doing somewhat better, but even there, uh, the trade war has taken a huge toll on China. Now there's hope that things are going to get better, but right now, Things are slowing down a lot in China, and that affects uh, Korea and Taiwan and Australia and Japan and all the places that are kind of working with them. So things are definitely slowing down in Asia. Latin America is not doing well at all. I mean, Venezuela is a complete basket case, basically. Uh, Brazil has the Amazon forest raging. I mean, there's just a lot of bad things going on there. So if you look around the world, we are kind of the shining light on the hill, as Reagan used to say, as far as having economic growth. Uh, having low unemployment, uh, interest rates are low, but uh, at least they're positive, um, and earnings have been growing. We've, we've had just had a tremendous third quarter earnings report where most companies, particularly consumer-oriented companies, really beat estimates and have been rewarded with higher stock prices. I mean, just one, two examples, Microsoft and Apple continue to hit new all-time highs. Their market capitalization is well over a trillion dollars. So there's lots of companies leading the charge here, and they're just much more on the consumer side than the industrial side. Yeah, it seems like we're becoming what I call a debtor nation, uh, yep. not only sovereign debt, corporate debt, and personal debt. And I know that you're an expert and you've helped many people to get out of that debt, whether it's mortgage loans, uh, you know, credit card debt, uh, student loan debt, all kinds of debt that people are in. Uh, so how bad is the situation and what are some resources that people can use to help get out of debt? Well, the federal government has over 22 trillion in debt and that's growing at roughly a trillion a year. But for consumers, it's roughly 16 trillion in the, in the US only. Um, so you're right, mortgage debt's about 13 trillion, uh, student loan debt 1.6 trillion, car debt 1.3 trillion, credit card debt a little over 1 trillion, and I'll throw one last one in, medical debt. A lot of people are not properly insured or not insured at all. That's about 500 billion in, in medical debt. So let's just go through those, David, one at a time. And I'd love to help people get better handle on those huge debts that they've got. Let's start with mortgage, if that's okay with you, because that's the biggest debt that most people have. So the traditional mortgage system is you keep your money in a checking account, earning nothing, and then you pay on your 30-year mortgage the same amount for 30 years. The first 10 to 15 years, you pay almost all interest, pay very, very little progress on the principal for many, many years. <clears throat> and eventually, you pay the principal off. <clears throat> and then, if people refinance their mortgage, they start a new 30-year clock all over again. Even though their payment and interest rate may be lower, they just threw away years of interest they just paid and start the whole clock all over again. So that's the traditional system, which works really well for the banks. <laughs> I'm interested in what's good for the consumers, and it's a strategy called mortgage equity optimization, 
which allows you to have your money work for you every day and pay your mortgage off literally 25 years faster than you ever thought possible on your existing level of income. <clears throat> I'm going to give websites all the way along to help people actually implement these strategies as well. In this case, truthinequity.com is the website that can help people uh, kind of implement mortgage optimization. So let me just briefly explain uh, how it works. So you you open, you have a traditional first mortgage at 4%, you know, some kind of good rate. And then on top of that, you get a home equity line of credit, a HELOC as it's called, which is a liquid line. You can put money in, you can take it out, however you like. You keep your income, which normally would be sitting in the checking account doing nothing, in the HELOC, which is pushing down your mortgage balance every day. HELOCs are based on what's called average daily balance. So the money you have in there, you're making progress on the principal every day. You feed money from the HELOC towards the first, and depending on how the numbers work out, in five or six years, you're completely mortgage free. Let me just give a simple example, David, of how this might work, okay? Sure. Say you had a house worth 300,000, as an example. And say you had a 200,000 first at 4%, some kind of a good rate. You'd go out and get a $50,000 HELOC, you just opened it, so you haven't used it yet. You'd write a check, $50,000, towards the first. So now you owe 50 on the HELOC, 150 on the first. Then you keep your income in that HELOC, pushing the balance down every day. And after a year or so, that $50,000 has been paid off. And then you do it again. You write another $50,000 check on the HELOC towards the first. So now instead of owing 150, you owe 100. You do it twice more. So after four years or so, you've paid off your first and the fifth year you pay off your HELOC and you are now mortgage free. That's kind of an oversimplified example of how it works. But notice that every day, because the money you have is pushing that principal down the HELOC, you're making progress, accelerating progress on your mortgage as opposed to the traditional system where you make one payment a month and for many, many years you're making no progress on the principal. So what a difference that might be. Say you had a couple that was 35 and they had their mortgage paid off by 40 instead of 65, <laughs> wouldn't that be a big difference in their lives? Um, so at that website, truthinequity.com, you it's what's called a personal profile, it's all free. You put in your income, your expenses, your mortgage, your house, and it's gonna say what you're doing today, it's gonna take you 29 years to pay off your mortgage. With the numbers you just gave us, it'll be 6.2 years, whatever it comes out to be. And then they show you step-by-step step how to do it, including getting the best HELOC anywhere in the country. There are three things, David, you need to make this work. Got to have equity in your house. There's nothing, if you're underwater in the house, there's nothing to borrow against. Have to have a decent credit score, I would say 680 or higher to qualify for the HELOC and positive cash flow. More money coming in than going out. That positive cash flow during the month is what's pushing that mortgage balance down. So we have just saved your followers 25 years off their mortgage and tens of thousands of dollars in needless interest just by the way you flow your money you don't need extra income. You're just flowing it in a much more efficient way for you. So that's that's one good way of getting that mortgage paid off. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. I like the sound of that. So that's the mortgage side. Okay, let's go to student loans, for example, is another big one. So again, 1.6 trillion. Average person's graduating about 38,000 in student loan debt. This is the debt of this generation. Uh, people are going in, just haven't saved enough. Even if they save something, they haven't saved enough for these tuitions these days. So the kids are maxing out, the parents are maxing out on student loans, and it's hanging over them in a terrible way. It's very hard to get a job and get on with your life if you've got this huge burden of student loans kind of hanging over you. Over half the people graduating every year are going back and living at home again because they can't afford to rent an apartment and have a car and kind of get on with their life because of the student loan problem. Uh, probably the best thing you can do is to refinance the student loans into one payment at a lower interest rate, combining any federal loans you have and any private loans, typically in the 3% range, something like that. Uh, my favorite resource there is called Splash Financial, and their website is splashfinancial.com, and then just do forward slash money answers. You get 350 bucks off your first payment at combining them all into one. So it doesn't make the, the student loan disappear, but at least paying it at 3% instead of 6 or 10 or whatever you may be will help you pay it off a little bit quicker. So that'll help people a little bit with the student loans. Does that make sense? I like what I hear so far. Absolutely. So that's the student loans. Okay, let's do car loans. Huge problem out there. 
in the last few years, people have taken on a lot of car loan debt because the cars are nice, but uh, not only do they take on a lot of debt, but it takes on a long maturity. It might be six years instead of three years to pay off your car debt. And people are running into trouble because they can't afford these loans. And so they're getting a lot of repossessions and uh, delinquencies all over the place. So the best thing to do is you can refinance your car loan to a much lower interest rate and change the maturity so the payment is more affordable to you. There's a free website called MyLoanGen, G-E-N, MyLoanGen.com, and you put in everything about your existing car loan. Uh, monthly payment, how much more you have to left, uh, how many more months, value of the car, and it's going to say, okay, based on that, you, it gives you a little dial and you can change whether you want to change the maturity or change the interest rate to get it to its, make, makes it more affordable for you. And then when you get a payment you like, you hit submit, a bunch of credit unions around the country compete for your business. You can refinance your car loan in a very short time at myloangen.com. Because what you do not want, David, is the repo man to come in the middle of the night and take your car away because you didn't make a payment. That is not a fun experience. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, so far, uh, we have a number of websites that I want people to visit. Uh, truthinequity.com. And these will all be in the description below this video, so you don't have to remember every single one. All right. Uh, you've got myloangen, G-E-N.com. Uh, of course, you've got moneyanswers.com. You've got, uh, I believe it was splash. Splashfinancial.com. Splashfinancial.com forward slash money answers. That'll right. get them a discount. Am I right? Yeah, they get $350 off their first payment. That's correct. Very nice. Okay. Did I miss any? Those are the ones we've done so far. Uh, the next one would be in the credit card space. Right. Because a lot of people have very, very high interest rates on credit cards much higher than they need to. So a free website there would be called guide to credit card.com. And you go on there and all the best deals are to be had, whether it could be frequent flyer miles, uh, hotel points, Disney points, cash rebates, five, 6%. Even if you've got bad credit, you can do what's called a secured credit card. You put up a certain amount of money, they give you a credit line for that amount. You pay it responsibly, you graduate to an unsecured card. What most people do, David, is they rely on whatever shows up in the mail. And those are the worst deals. Highest annual fees, highest interest rates, shortest grace periods. Just spend a little bit of time with the website I just gave you, and now you can find the best deals anywhere in the country that are best for you. And don't apply to a ton of cards. One or two at a time is the most. Because if you start applying to a lot of cards, that's going to hurt your credit score. It's going to be what's called a hard inquiry on your credit report. So... That'll help with the credit cards. And as we enter the holiday season, it's really easy to get it over your head in credit card debt. Gotcha. And that URL is guide to credit cards.com. Am I right? Singular. Guide to credit card singular.com. Dot guide to credit card.com. So many resources. Wow. Okay. And everybody has practically almost everybody has at least one of those types of debt or they're going to be looking at that type of debt within their within probably the next few years or they right. know somebody with that type of debt. And then there's medical debt. We talked about medical debt as well. So lots of people now, because health insurance is no longer mandated, people have been dropping their health insurance, yeah. which is great until you have a medical emergency of some kind or some kind of a major medical event. And then you're really up against it. Over 50% of bankruptcies are because of medical debt. And even the deductibles and co-payments uh, can really be more than people can afford. So if you've got a lot of medical debt, uh, two things I'd recommend. One of them is called MediShare, uh, M-E-D-I-S-H-A-R-E, -E, which is like an alternative to um, uh, traditional health insurance. It's a community, actually it's a Christian community around the country and you contribute what you can afford, other people contribute, and if you have not contributed enough in your account, uh, your healthcare bills are paid up by other people's contributions. So it's a very innovative way. It's called health sharing, and that's a way for you to lower your premiums, get your bills paid, and they've always paid everybody's bills. No matter if you have a heart attack, some major thing, they always pay your bills. So that's one thing people can do. And then another thing they can do is if they've got a lot of healthcare debt, at high rates and it seems like it's overwhelming you can get a healthcare advocacy organization to help you settle that debt for pennies on the dollar hmm. my favorite one is called healthcare advocates 
at healthcareadvocates.com. They're based in Philadelphia. And the first thing they do is they look at the bill in detail and they say, no, we're not paying $80 for an aspirin and <laughs> things like that. There's all kinds of fluff in these medical bills that they can kind of get down. Right. And then once they get down to the core medical bill, they settle it with the healthcare provider, could be a doctor, hospital, could be anybody, for five, 10 cents on the dollar. I saw a guy recently, he had a $200,000 bill uh, after he had a heart operation. They settled it for 3000 wow. know, so. Mm. This is not something the average person is going to be able to do. But again, there's about 500 billion in medical debt out there, and healthcare advocates at healthcareadvocates.com, if you're in that circumstance, can help you get it down to a much lower level. So those are hopefully some useful suggestions on the biggest debts that people have. Wow. Okay. So healthcareadvocates.com uh, is that only for people who who already have large amounts of medical debt, or is that for that's, everybody? That's what it's designed for. It's not to prevent it. But it's once you've got it, they they settle it and slim it down to what's really what you owe. Yeah. Wow. That's that's huge. These are great, great resources. Thank you for all of that. Wow. Uh, but people are going to want to keep listening because we're going to have more uh, information for you right now. Uh, you know, I want to talk about different ways to make money. I mean, you've mentioned ways to help. Uh, you know, get out of debt to save money. That's huge. That's a big part of wealth building. Uh, but there actually, from what I understand, are some ways to even get some free money from the resources right. that we already have. Can can you mention some of those? I'm always into free money, David. I'm <laughs> glad you are too. Yes, you're not objecting to me giving you hundreds of thousands of free money, right? Right. First one is what's called unclaimed assets. Now, lots and lots of people move from one location to another, from one job to another, and they leave money behind and they forget about it. Could be a bank account could be a 401k. Uncle Harry died and left you a life insurance settlement. They couldn't find you. Uh, just a lot of money that's left behind. So when they can't find the people, uh, it goes into this office of unclaimed assets in every state. And in theory, they look for you for like five years by putting super small one point type uh, ads in newspapers that nobody ever sees. And after five years, I say, well, we tried, we couldn't find them, so the state just takes the money, basically. Hmm. So there's a free website called missingmoney.com, which is a consortium of all of the offices of unclaimed assets throughout the country. And you put in everything about yourself, your name, your middle initial, your last name, your maiden name, your former addresses, your former employers, all these different things. And you'd be surprised at what you can come up with. It could be thousands of dollars that you forgot about, and then as long as they, you can prove it's you and you have a legitimate claim to it, there you go. Lots, thousands of dollars of free money. People are surprised all the time. Just go to missingmoney.com and, and there you go. So that's one example of free money. Another one would be in the life insurance realm. Now, lots of people have life insurance policies. They've been putting money into it for years, but they don't use it. They don't need it anymore. Say, for example, their kids are self-supporting and they don't really need it anymore. What most people do when they get into their 60s and 70s is they let those life insurance policies lapse. But instead what they can do is sell those policy policies into what's called the life settlement market, where particularly hedge funds will buy your life insurance policy for two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. They become the owners of that policy. They pay the premiums. And when you die, they get a death benefit. So say you had a million dollar policy and say you're 75 years old, you sell it for like 300,000, something like that. You you get 300,000 now, the hedge fund takes it over. When you die, they invested 300,000, they get the million. Tell your kids about it. You have to have your kids actually sign off on it. But this is a, an asset that a lot of people have that they don't realize they have. In fact, you can pay that off, pay off other debts, invest it, whatever you like. So a website for that is fundinglife.com. And what they do is they put together buyers and sellers of life insurance policies. Your listeners would probably be the sellers of life insurance policies. They have more buyers than they've got policies to sell them at this point. So it's a very strong market. Hmm. Um, now, the older you are, and frankly, the sicker you are, the more money you're going to get because the people buying the policy think you're not going to stick around all that long. So you're going to get more if you're 85 than if you're 75. Now, it might not be for your your, your listeners directly, but maybe their parents have uh, life insurance policies that they don't know what to do with, they can't afford the premiums anymore. Have them sell the policies 
at fundinglife.com as opposed to letting them lapse. And that could literally be hundreds of thousands of dollars people don't even know they have a right to. Wow, that, it's like picking money up off the ground for a lot of people. A lot of it money, is. actually, potentially. Uh, so that's missingmoney.com and fundinglife.com. So right. many resources in here, my goodness. I hope people avail themselves uh, of sure. all these websites uh, that are, this is just great. It's like a gold mine of information, this video. Uh, gonna keep going, there, there's more. Uh, you know, I, wanted to, I love talking about gold and silver. Sure. Um, you know, are, are there opportunities? I, I've got gold right now uh, at around fifteen hundred dollars per ounce. Silver uh, pierced the uh, eighteen dollar level per ounce. Uh, are there opportunities in the precious metals sector right now? I think so. Uh, I mean, it's unusual when the stock market's doing so well that gold and silver are doing well too. But so far this year, they've gold and silver had a really quite a good move here. Yeah. The central banks around the world have been buying a huge amount of gold because they're worried about the depreciation of currencies. You've got like this race to the bottom, everybody trying to depreciate their currency. Yeah. Well, what's hold, the dollar's been go up, but gold has been up as well. Also, when you have low and falling interest rates, that makes gold more attractive because it costs less to hold gold. The carrying costs are, in Europe, zero, negative, actually. Um, and I think all of the hotspots around the world, whether it be the Middle East, uh, North Korea, uh, you know, Syria, uh, Venezuela, there's just lots of kind of dramatic and all the whole situation with Brexit and Europe just makes people very nervous. They kind of want a safety haven. And so gold kind of plays that role. So yes, I think gold, which has gone from whatever, 1200 to 1500 or so, I think it could go certainly up to like 1700 uh, this year and, and probably considerably more than that uh, next year. Now you can certainly buy physical gold coins, but there are ways I would play it that are different than that. You can certainly buy the gold exchange traded fund, which is GLD, which owns physical gold, or a more leveraged way to play gold is the gold mining shares. And an ETF for that is GDX. And that's got all the big, like Newmont Mining and Barrick Mining and uh, all those kind of big companies. Or if you want to be even more speculative, GDXJ is the junior mining companies. A lot of them haven't even found gold yet, but they've got prospects. So when gold goes up, their uh, costs of producing gold do not go up. So it's just like pure profit to their bottom line. Say it costs a particular mining company $1,100 to get an ounce of gold. Well, if gold went from $1,300 to $1,500 and their production costs are made at $1,100, their profit just went up $200 an ounce for doing nothing else. So that's why there's a lot of leverage in the gold mining companies. Uh, so when gold goes up, they go up even more. But when gold goes down, they go down even more. So they're more volatile. But I do think gold is going to be going up. And silver is the same thing. Silver at 18 or so, it's more of an industrial metal. But the differential between gold and silver is very wide. Nip typically, silver is a much closer ratio to gold. So again, you could play uh, SLV, which is the exchange traded fund owning physical silver, or Wheaton Precious Metals, WPM is the symbol on that one, which is what's called a royalty company. They don't actually do the digging themselves. They lend money to a whole bunch of silver mines. And as production comes on, they get a royalty from that. So it's a kind of a cleaner, simpler way. And they actually have a bit of a dividend, one and a half percent dividend at Wheaton as well. There's, by the way, one of those in the gold area, which is called Franco Nevada. FNV is a symbol on that. They do the same thing with gold money shares. So those are some of the ways I would play gold and silver. I really like the royalty and streaming model. Uh, that That's a great way to indirectly get into the gold and silver space as an investor uh, because you're not exposed necessarily to a company that, uh, you know, they, uh, individual companies, gold and silver right. companies, they, they might have problems with the workers or with jurisdictions or local laws or whatever. Uh, whereas Franco Nevada, which is FNV, uh, you know, Wheaton, uh, which is uh, WPM, I believe, uh, you know, though they're investing in the miners uh, right. and the junior miners. So uh, it, it's direct exposure, but maybe not so direct in terms of the liabilities all the time. So I, I really like those suggestions. Much simpler business. They've got hardly any employees because they're basically just investing in all these other miners. They have no mining operations whatsoever. Yeah. That's a leveraged way to play gold and silver as well. So that, that would be my, if you want to do it that way, it's more leveraged. If you want to have got the physical without having actual coins in your home, that would be GLD or SLD. Right.
Right, absolutely. I uh, wanted to talk about uh, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, if you don't sure. mind. Uh, something very exciting. A lot of my viewers and listeners are into the crypto space. Uh, do you believe there's a future here for Bitcoin and other cryptos? Yes, I do think there's a future. It is volatile, as we've seen. <laughs> it went from $10 to 20000 or so, and then down to 3000 and now 8000 and it's been all over the place. But it's becoming more institutionally oriented and that's when that institutional money comes in that's when bitcoin really goes up an awful lot um so yes i mean not a huge amount of your portfolio maybe five percent at most uh, and don't kind of trade it too actively um but yes i think bitcoin it, it's almost similar to gold in a certain way it's got this kind of safe haven atmosphere about it because it's not being controlled uh, by government agencies or central banks they don't particularly like that, and they're trying to restrict it. But yes, I think uh, Bitcoin in the long term definitely has some some room to roll. Now, Libra, which is the big cryptocurrency that uh, Facebook is kind of leading, this kind of Libra association, uh, has been running into some trouble lately uh, because of all the criticism from Capitol Hill and some of the big players like MasterCard and Visa have dropped out. That's supposed to be a stable coin. It's not supposed to go up and down in value, but it's supposed to be used to buy and sell things over Facebook. That is going to come eventually uh, using cryptocurrencies in actual transactions. Right now, it's kind of a speculative vehicle, um, and it's very much dependent on supply and demand at any particular time. So, yes, I think they have a future. Keep a relatively small amount and just don't look at it too often because it'll make you see things. Right. Uh, so small position sizing is always recommended for anything that's volatile. And I believe that cryptocurrencies would probably belong in that category. So I certainly, uh, yes. certainly agree with that. Uh, and then want to talk about places to get high stable yields yes. uh, in today's stock market, uh, whether it's REITs or which is real estate investment trusts, maybe MLPs, master limited partnerships. Yep. Uh, what are your preferred uh, you know, vehicles for investing in today's stock market? So, you know, if you just keep it at the S&P 500, maybe that's a 2% yield, something like that. Treasuries, 1.5%. CDs, money market funds, 1% or less. You're just not earning anything. So you've got to go out the risk spectrum a little bit. But there's loads of companies that have been among the leaders this year. And not only their stock prices, their dividends, and they've been raising their dividends in many cases. So, yes, my first category would be real estate investment trusts, which are institutional uh, forms of liquid real estate. They can specialize in offices or apartment buildings or self-storage units or healthcare or different parts of the country. There's lots of different REITs out there. Yield six to 10%, something like that. If you do an equity REIT, it's got more growth potential, but a lower yield. If you do a mortgage REIT, it's gonna have a higher yield with less growth potential. So just to give you some examples there, Starwood REIT is in the hotel space, uh, STWD. They've currently got a yield of about 8%. There's another one called Gladstone REIT, symbol G-O-O-D. Uh, symbol, uh, the yield's about 7% on that one. Um, and if you want a pure yield play, Annaly Trust, symbol N-L-Y, is yielding about 12%. That's a mortgage REIT. Um, so for higher yields with relative stability in the stock prices, I think that's one of the best places to go is REITs. I like those specific uh, ticker symbols. Uh, we're, we're talking about actionable uh, you know, possibilities here. And of, of course, I am not a licensed or registered investment advisor, and, and you know, neither are you. So we're not telling people what to buy or what not to buy. But these are great things to put on your watch list. And uh, I want to top this off by saying that uh, we've created a special landing page. Right. Uh, for everybody to, to go ahead and click on as soon as you're done watching this video, it's go.moneyanswers.com forward slash looking at the markets. Hey, that's my show. <laughs> so, that's correct. Uh, and you don't have to write all that down. Just go below this video into, into the description section and you can go ahead and click on that. Uh, or if you just want to go to moneyanswers.com, type it in your browser. That's fine too. You know, I, I'm not trying to get all the credit for all the clicks here. I'm, we're trying to help people here. And so just to recap, and I'm going to put all these in the, description. And let me give, if, if I can, David, let me just give a few more examples on the high yield area. We talked okay, about REITs, yeah. but let me go back to MLPs, Master Limited Partnerships. Sure. Uh, these are publicly traded vehicles that typically are in the energy space, and they typically own energy infrastructure, things like pipelines, storage facilities, ports, things like that. They get the oil and gas from the fields to the refining facilities, mostly. 
So there, it's a much more stable business. It's not based on the price of oil and gas. It's based on the price of transporting oil and gas, which is much more stable. So those have some very nice yields. Um, they've done extremely well. Uh, my favorites there would be Enterprise Products Partners, EPD. Currently has a deal of about 6%, something like that. Uh, another one would be um, uh, the Alarian MLP Exchange Traded Fund. The symbol for that is AMLP. That currently yields 9%. Um, so those are two examples of uh, things in the MLP space. Um, and as we're building out new pipelines, with the fracking revolution, uh, they benefit. They have to do a lot of capital expenditures to put the pipelines in. But once they've got it, it's like a toll road. You just keep collecting money forever as oil and gas keeps kind of going through there. And it's a way of playing America's energy independence in a high income way. So that would be another MLPs, either through them directly, or as I mentioned, like through the exchange traded funds. Uh, another area for high yields is preferred stocks. Preferred stocks are issued typically at $25 a share. They don't move up and down very much, but they've got some very, very nice yields. You can either do individual preferreds, but I like the funds and ETFs uh, there as well. So one of my favorite ones is called the iShares Preferred and Income Securities Fund. The symbol on that is PFF, uh, currently yielding about 6%. So that's a diversified portfolio of many, many preferreds. And another one would be called the Nuveen Preferred Securities Income Fund, symbol JPS, yielding about 7%. Uh, so again, two diversified ways of playing preferreds, which are somewhat interest sensitive, but it's a way of getting a much higher yield in a diversified way. And I'll just give you one other example in the high yield space, which are called business development companies or BDCs. These are companies that lend money over a relatively short period of time, one year to 18 months, to medium and smaller size companies that have trouble getting loans from traditional banks. And as a result of that, they pay higher yields. Um, and the stocks tend to be relatively stable with very, very nice yields. Uh, there's about 60 BDCs out there. I'll just give you two of my favorites. Mm -hmm. One of them is called Ares Capital, A-R-E-S Capital. A symbol for that, A-R-C-C. Uh, that's currently yielding about 6%. And the stock's been quite stable for a long time. And another one is called TCG Capital. And the symbol for that is CGBD. That currently yields 10%. Again, had a pretty stable stock price for a long time. So BDCs is another way of getting some pretty nice yields with relatively stable stock prices. So we've got BDCs, master limited partnerships, preferreds, and REITs as four categories to get some pretty nice yields with relative stability in this kind of volatile market. Yeah, uh, those are very good yields. And as you mentioned, these are stocks that, you know, this is not a guarantee in the future, right. but in the past, uh, they've remained relatively stable. And so you're just sitting back, collecting those yields and uh, doing better than probably most people in the stock market and certainly better than somebody who's getting 1.7% right. on 10 year treasuries. Uh, or, you know, a CD, which gets, you know, one, one and a half percent, something like that per year. Not so great. So and these somebody's are... paid monthly, by the way, some pay quarterly, some pay monthly. Okay. Aries Capital, for example, TCG, they pay monthly. So it's a way of having a regular cash flow. As you say, you sit back and collect the checks, which is always a good way of doing it. That, that's a great way to build wealth over time. I, lo I like all of your recommendations. Uh, people need to go to the des description below this video and check out all the websites we've mentioned today. Splashfinancial.com forward slash money answers. Myloangen.com. Truthandequity.com. Guide to creditcards.com. Healthcareadvocates.com. Missingmoney.com. Fundinglife.com, so many of these, my goodness, it just keeps going, all these resources. Uh, and of course, if you want to just a recap and more resources of what we've learned today, go.moneyanswers.com forward slash looking at the markets, or just go right to moneyanswers.com. And uh, even if I don't get credit for those clicks, I'm okay with that. I just want people to get these resources. That's first and foremost. And go to moneyanswers.com anyway for more of Jordan Goodman's insights. Uh, I believe you you have a uh, a podcast uh, that comes I out. Do. Is that... Well, you've been on it actually. It's called the Money Answer Show. Yeah, you've been, you've been my guest on the Money Answer Show. I've been doing it every week since 2007. I think I've got about 700 episodes now. You're on uh, 700. Uh, wow. All the top people in finance, including you. Uh, I do a weekly what's called the Money Answers Minute, 
which is a video, two or three minute video about different financial topics. Uh, I've got a free Money Answers newsletter, Money Answers blog, I've got yeah. all things. And then I'm always glad to take emails directly from people uh, like your listeners as well at moneyanswers.com. I, I appreciate that so much, and uh, man, we got to have you. You got got to have you back on here for an update uh, on the markets because uh, you're a, a wealth of information, Mr. Jordan Goodman. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, looking at the markets, and uh, we'll definitely talk to you. Talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot, sir. Very good. Thanks so much, David. Appreciate it.